back to a personal code of conduct a very late recording of a personal code of conduct on on as usual a very unproductive day and we exist we're here we, we're vibing and i don't have anything special that is in discovering joseph campbell she isn't like finding something new about herself her work week wasn't particularly terrible and she realizes that every new week, every new moment, she finds a way to reinvent. I won't even use the word reinvent herself because she feels woefully at that. But like, she finds a way to decide that this is what I'm doing. And she does part of it. And those parts keep growing every single day to become a better human. To become, I don't know what she's becoming. <laughs> but every day she tries to improve and she tries to wonder okay is this what i'm doing with myself is this how i'm getting to myself is this how the universe is going to continue and i'm like i don't know i don't know today it was another day of me drowning up in big issues and that i couldn't solve i did not know enough of i wasn't willing to educate just drowning myself in massive issues and completely ignoring like the people in my front the people in my existence but then again as i always say i get terrified of big things of of the world ending of wars happening of of accepting my own unimportance like i think i have accepted my own unimportance but rather than pc has brought fear it has brought fear about the fact that an overwhelming something, a couple of oligarchs, a couple of even oligarchs, their life aren't safe because, well, they're powerful people and, well, there's always somebody more powerful. But it's like you spend your years, your life wondering, like, okay, is this like, is this how it's going to be? Is this how it's going to end? When I was younger, I just thought about a peaceful life. I thought. I didn't even think that Nigeria was that bad, so it was too like the old concept of I'd live in a flat as well. And I didn't really have to face traffic or spend like hours on the road. So it was, oh, you'd go to work. I didn't know what you did in work, but like my whole mind was that it'd end by four o'clock. You'd go to work, you'd come back to your spouse, to your children who are watching TV and You guys would talk about each other's day. Then you guys would do your personal activities. Like kids who who liked reading novels go like reading novels. The one who wanted to play video games or go out to their friends would go out to their friends. The one who just wanted to sleep for ridiculously long hours would do that. And everybody would go to bed except for the person that went to bed early. Yeah. But as you become an adult, you just wonder, like, oh, okay, is this safe? Is this, like, so many people, a disturbing amount of people have the power to just overturn your life. People overturning your life for their own ego, for their own ambition. For something you cannot even see, they decide to, like, ruin your future. They decide that the lives of everyone you love and your existence is not as important as their ambition. And there are some people who are willing and ready to be used as pawns. <laughs> See me blowing air into the mic. People who are ready to lose their lives, who are ready to die, who are, re- who are ready to be unimportant. I should get a noise remover. I should, I really should. Yeah. There's so much background noise in this. And I haven't been like putting like audio and see how my poof 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 air all over the place. But it's like coming to yourself and deciding, okay, this is how everything is going to happen. In my insignificance causes me stress. It's like I'm either unable to focus on the small things or I'm hyper focused on small things. Like it's so easy to drag away my attention. You think about long histories, you think about days past, and to be honest, I'm even though like nigeria is not the best place to be born i am grateful for the peace i have for the station i'm in for the fact that the mentions of war are far far away even though mentions of wealth are also incredibly far or mentions of war are incredibly incredibly far away but there's always this fear that will it always be far away
or will your nation ever get stable will here will you ever have good infrastructure and never have to spend three hours in traffic and the maddening idea of losing your youth to working or would you be safe in that middle class maybe things in yours in your nation would get better and you wouldn't have to leave like every young person maybe maybe things in your nation would get better and you wouldn't have to leave like every single young person and you'd be fine you'd be able to go to places decide things be be happier you'd be able to i don't know what you'd be able to do but then again the fear i don't i the one thing is like I, my moments of passion for like horrible parts of history and the thing is it's not that's the one thing i kind of love and at the same time detest about humanity it's not just some powerful oligarch or powerful ruler or powerful monopoly or powerful somebody that decides it's the middlemen the middle managers that make all of this happen the middle women the reason why i'm separating women from like the general term middlemen is like they're often in the shadows like enabling somebody's crazy idea to happen and to happen for hundreds of years and they're profiting off of this and funny enough the profiteers all the air is making me wonder how this thing is going to sound the profiteers might truly believe in the cause and the profit just makes them crueler but the starters they never believe in anything like them the middle managers and the bottom they're not worth anything they're just there i keep saying to myself that i need ambition <laughs> what am i aspiring to to buy things to talk about the house of my dreams and buy that would that make me feel safe would that guarantee peace even then even if you are living safe, like wouldn't you just want to be the I, I think like for the most part the middle class 80 year old or 89 year old let's be generous to yourself with an uninventful life seems like the best bet there's no fear there's no just nice middle management job where you complete your roles and this one thing i i also like i like roles with discovery and and knowledge and math and and wanting to go forward and shit like that i want happiness i want structure i want i want i want i want but so do many people i'm not the only one on this planet and it's terrifying the lack of not being the only one uh, no 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 you call it honest like i feel very real i feel very amazing i should really clean my fan ah uh, i should clean my fan it's disgusting i'm very sure that's why all the air doesn't feel like it's copying up i feel very amazing i feel whole i feel capable of thoughts i feel like i think I want to feel like the world owes me something, but I know better. I know that it does not. But the thing is, knowing that there are people, 7 billion copies of myself. I won't even say like copies because they're unique. But by copies, I mean they have every drop that I feel, that makes me feel alive. They have every drop of it. Then for the other things that are just jara, they may or may not have it. And I may not have their own jaras, their own special quirks. But for the fundamental things that I can point to that makes me feel alive, I think that 7 billion other people have it. I say I think because I think I'm too stuck in my face where 9-year-old me wanted to believe I was the only real one. When I, when I got scolded or I got like, or my opinion was proven wrong or... or it was almost like bending reality in my own mind space that i was the right one and things were fine and i was the only real one and this is how the world is meant to be and all the other people that in quotes have it worse or have it better do not exist because i am real i wasn't even nine i i don't, I don't know i was i think i was more of seven but i was only able to put that emotion those ideas 
into words when I became like 15. And I understood, oh, this is how I felt. This is how I wanted to be. Because then you were, in my teenage years, I was like stuck with the harsh reality that you're not special. And that's, it wasn't fine. But now it's fine, even though I still have moments of my own personal disappointment and my complete unwillingness to work because it's no longer interesting. (laughs) But I have to do that. I have to learn new things. I have to create new options i have to earn in dollars i have to find a sense of stability for myself a sense of stability a sense of structure for myself i have to create a lesson plan i have to decide oh this is how i'm going to do things this is how things are going to happen how is that going to happen i don't know people live interesting lives even the most like um brutal or cruel of people ah uh, and i i've been thinking about like um i know i've been thinking about it for months if you follow it you know i've been thinking about it for months like starting just telling stories telling interesting fun vivid stories that make no sense I, i'm thinking high fantasy i have no plot i have no story that's why i don't think i've started but like I miss just starting a story and talking about like wings of light and purple hair and flaming swords and creating a bloodline, a story. Oh, I'm using, yeah, a bloodline, a royal bloodline, vibes and energy and spirits and everything that goes in between. I'm going to have a three day work week. I wish it was a two two day work week, but it's a three day work week. And I pissed away Saturday and Sunday of my four days of freedom and i hope not to piss away sunday monday and tuesday (laughs) i hope to finally see a friend i hope to have lunch and eat something interesting but i'm wondering i should be surrounded by so many people and i don't want to share i don't want to share i don't want to share i want to get something for her and for her alone as I've been wondering, like, should I go and visit another, a different person where I know that, okay, this person's alone and I don't have to share their attention, I think. I shouldn't have to share their attention and, like, buy a ton of stuff for them. Yeah. Yeah. I shouldn't have to share their attention. I shouldn't have to share their vibes. Just buy a ton of stuff for them and we just watch something and eat. It'd be good. We should watch something and eat. I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to share her attention. I wish she was like home alone. As I was like, I wish she was home alone. And yeah. She could be with me and we talk and talk and eat and eat. And play video games and laugh. Oh, I didn't end up buying the outfits I was going to wear. I was going to wear something cool. I look cool to her place and be a vibe and show my new hair that I have scraped. But oh well, that's not going to happen because I forgot. I decided to be like a dead fish. Who? I, I think that's the thing with the internet. The internet is so easy to caught, get caught, like caught up in historical topics and like big things that happen but like when you're not touching your phone and you're focusing on getting things to work it's so easy to just lose sight of everything and and find yourself being hyper focused on getting somebody's approval being there for someone i hope everything's fine we are currently in the second month of the second quarter second month of the second quarter second month of the second quarter and soon i know this month is going to be a long month but i want to feel like i have achieved something second month of the second quarter second month of the second quarter Second month of the second quarter. I'm repeating it several times because I'm like, 
oh i haven't achieved in quotes anything i wanted to in the first quarter i need to rearrange my mindsets rearrange the way i approach people the way i tend to convince people the way i present my speech the way i present my thought process i want to be efficient effective and useful i don't know i really don't know i really don't know it's it's probably going to be a vibe a thought a process energy smoothness fondness wanting to have growth wanting to be somewhere wanting to create things and decide okay this is what i'm doing with myself this is this is me now this is the energy that you're going to get I can't do that because I, I, I'm constantly in a state of, well, let's not do that today. Which is horrible because, like, what the fuck? I hope I don't have. Uh, which is horrible. Because you need to live. You need to vibe. You need to be someone who is capable of more. You need energy. You need growth. You need sleep. You need to have a code of conduct. You need to properly write down when faced with this situation, this is what I will do. And you need to actually do it. You need structure. You need to stop having moments of ups and highs and and vibes and no vibes. You need to have moments where you decide this is just, there's no up, there's no down, there's just what is. So that you can live, so that you can choose. I feel like I think I'm different from last year. I'm different from the year before because I truly have entered the second phase. I have entered the second phase, the true second season of a personal code of conduct. And I'm like, yeah, I have. Like since the beginning of this year, I did enter the second phase. And I don't want to be 25 feeling as unaccomplished as I felt when i turned 23 yeah i got myself out of that hell hole i didn't like do as much as i thought as i would but like yeah i'm not going to be as unaccomplished as i felt when i turned 23 so i won't feel like that when i turn 25 because i know i wasted my 22nd year i did like an average job of getting my shit together in my 23rd year and we're almost halfway through to my 24th i don't want to feel i don't want the even years to be the horrible years and i'm 25 i'm like fuck we're going to get our shit together and kind of do like an average job about it then yeah i don't know anything it's it, the whole point is you're deciding oh how things should be how you ought to react how you ought to behave how you ought to navigate but i think the burning question is am i important and the answer is no and it shouldn't be like an issue but it is because i'm some kind of special amazing snowflake in my mind well i don't i think i am a special amazing snowflake because like there's like pounds of snow like each snowflake is unique but there's like pounds and pounds i'm using the words pounds when i i've grown up on kilograms i'm using the words i'm using snow as a metaphor when i've never seen it in my life but there's like a ton of snow in places where it snows at and yeah the crystals are unique but and they're interesting to look at every single one but it's just one of the many they form into a singular mass that you cannot distinguish and that is fine unimportance is fine but then that comes to it's like each snow flake or each whatever each grain of sand is going through its part the things that will affect it that grind it down cause it to melt <laughs> well it's going to happen to all the snow like that's like the big things that destroy your nature and it's funny thing i don't know who to be terrified about like powerful humans or mother nature that just decides to throw everybody's plan into the gutter 
sometimes stability peace structure those are the things i wish i had the power to demand for the entire world stability peace and structure structure in the sense that a child i know i've said this before definitely a child will go to school pick an interesting topic have a job in that interesting topic have a work-life balance in that interesting topic job because this the organizations and the nation has adequately planned their workforce to ensure that there is enough people that you don't have to do it crunch and even whether you have to do it shift if it's something that has to work 24 hours or there are enough people and structured in enough tasks that people can do what they need to do and leave i guess and then I think I would like if the retirement age was much higher because if you had like proper work-life balance throughout your your like working years you'd probably want to work longer even though you had savings and you paid for schools and all this stuff but like you probably want to work longer so maybe if retirement age was 70 and you worked till you were 70 you worked till you were 70 and just like oh at best well at worst have about well, a year to live if it's at worst if retirement age was 70. But I'm going to focus on just research for research sake. Yeah. Yeah. I think retirement should be like research with no purpose. Yeah, that's what retirement age should be. But then again there are always people with dementia and Alzheimer's and all this kind of stuff. But like I imagine a world stable enough that people work because they gen they know that oh okay economically we need to provide goods and services for everyone to live comfortable and i am exchanging my labor for the ability to purchase those desired groups and services but we also have bottom lines bottom lines of suffering that people are allowed to take bottom lines of of how long and how stressful and how mind-numbing a job is meant to be it has been a personal code of conduct it's dire just looking at the ways of the world and wondering where she fits in it does she fit anywhere is she existing is she real is she fake i should look into like the initial re- teachings of buddha well i don't know I, that's one thing i feel i think there's something i always want to say like I, it was one sentence i saw and read it buddha refused to answer whether or not there was a creator because that shouldn't be the point it's not like i'm re- revealing any re- reveling anyone as a religion but i'm like whether or not there's heaven or hell that shouldn't be the point the point is that i am here on earth and i should try to alleviate human suffering but we've done so many horrible things to each other whether the small things like me or the big things like people who lead our mothers of of war <laughs> modern or ancient or people who sell people or people who lead to torture or people who do anything for money because but they're not aware about the true values and structures of how things happen <sighs> oh well we think we live we learn it has been a personal code of conduct well next week as i always say will be a better week a more productive week a more structured more better quality better sounding as i always say but like it still never is but i think i think i'll do it i'll i don't know why i've, I've lost an insane amount of energy like this weekend it's like over the weekend strange i used to have like way more energy than this like energy to and willingness to live as is why the only advantage of having a job you like you present yourself like yeah 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 like i'm put together and shit but like that's like the advantage of like physical human interaction or like needed human interaction because even when it wasn't physical i in order to sound like engaged and interested in the um like on a zoom screen you still put in efforts even when you don't want to put in effort i think that's fantastic that's what human interaction does to us it allows us 
whether or not you are like not like in the right state of mind you you want to present yourself to other human beings and that's a good thing well it has been a personal code of conduct this was a ramble episode and dio talks about her place in the world yeah that's the title see me see me see me see me in the end bye